Carpe diem. My name is Ultranatic, and here's another Total Drama Vlog. And before I continue further, Ferocious Trout. Ferocious Trout. That was the other team name. I'm sorry, I just happen to have a lapse in memory in the last uh, Vlog, so I forgot their name. But yeah, it's the Ferocious Trout. Ferocious Trout, that's the red team. And Frogs of Death, that's the green team. That's surprisingly a little easier to remember that one because I know that, tra that, uh, that Frogs are green. Trout, I don't know what color they are usually. I don't think red, so... I don't know, like that, it was just hard for me to remember on that one, but I've got this time, so we're good to move forward with uh, this next episode, which is entitled Numbskull Island. Already, I like the name of that just because someone should make an actual show uh, called Numbskull Island. Just get a bunch of idiots, like idiots on island together, playing strategy games, giving horrible, awful strategy, getting into, <clears throat> uh, getting into penny Stupid fights over absolutely nothing. Who wouldn't watch the hell out of that? I, I would love to see it, so... Uh, yeah, already I give a solid thumbs up just for the episode title name. Uh, <clears throat> and we open up, uh, we get the recap of the last episode we usually get, but... Again, what I was mentioning about nice little touches, uh, we got Chris... Uh, saying like I had this big dangerous challenge set up, but who could have possibly devised that and you pan out and you see these giant cartoon arrows that are pointing like right at him and he's like I'm rich so yes I could just do that for that joke and I'm like See you should you get gotta do more stuff like that with this show because that actually is a really good use of cartoon comedic timing on this uh but then we move into the actual episode where Chase comes in and says, like, we have to thank the star player of the last challenge who got us that win, Nichelle from the Frogs of Death, because, you know, had she not said, we wouldn't have won. Which, I've seen that kind of thing happen in the past in reality shows, like how uh, Antonia in Hell's Kitchen 8 was deemed as the MVP for the blue team winning the signature dish challenge, which, I mean, her dish did break the tie as the worst, so I kind of get that, but... At the same time, it was, like, not the best sportsmanship, personally. Uh, he also, uh, Chase also tries, uh, mentioning about how Emma was constantly looking at him in the last few challenges. Uh, and Priya and Millie both stand back at him and say, you're being kind of a jerk. And I love the little segment where Priya stands up for Millie when Chase starts getting into a conversation with her about it. I remember seeing this in, like, the promos for this season about how Priya was going to be like, we're friends. And not just, like, like casual reality TV show friends, like, actual friends, like, forever kind of people. And I did, in fact, uh, like that because in the promo, I was wondering, oh, God, is this going to be, like, a culling kind of friendship thing? No, it was her actually staying up for somebody that she legit cares about and respects as a person. And I'm completely for that. You know, friendship is magic. <laughs> uh... We then get a little more fourth wall humor when Wayne and Raj are speculating about Nichelle and how she is not much of an action hero and says, Oh wait, so stuff on TV that happens just isn't real? We're on TV. Are we not real? And because they're like, they're like cartoon characters, I'm like, okay, it's a cute little bit of joke. Even MK mentions, I like messing with people, but some, people, some people's minds just mess with themselves. Again, like, whatever I think of her voice, it's a good quote. I could use that for later. Uh, we get Chase trying to hit it off again with Blonde Emma. Uh, don't know if I need to keep calling her that. Like, who, what, are you going to mistake her for the Emma for Redonquist race at this point? I'll just call her Emma. Uh, but yeah, he tries hitting it off with her, and he's oblivious to the fact that she's over him at this point. It's, uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm starting to realize, is this going to be a constant thing throughout the season? Because that is, in fact, going to get... Very annoying, the more he tries to keep going with that. Uh, we then get Priya and Millie, who have now formed an alliance based on their friendship, which I like, that's a pretty good sign, and they try to figure out a third person for their alliance. That wouldn't actually give them a majority anyway, because they'd only be three girls on a, tr on a uh, team of uh, seven people, but they are at least thinking ahead. They immediately nix out Chase and Ripper, because they're both a-holes, <laughs> No, it's because they have a, a, a strong bond themselves. But, like, also, like, I wouldn't work with them either. Uh, and then their reasoning for not vote, for not choosing Damien or Z honestly don't make a lot of sense because they say, we can't vote for Damien because he always votes for himself. What do you mean always? You haven't even gone to a, another marshmallow ceremony yet where he could have done that. Are, are, are we doing this out of order or something? Like, I like, got new, you gotta keep track of it, hello. And then uh, they say Z is too much of a wild card, which... 
they aren't wrong about per se, but that leaves Scary Girl. And I'm thinking, wait, she's less of a wild card than Z of, of, Look, I love Scary Girl, but objectively speaking, no, she's a bigger wild card. What, like, why would that be the first thing you go to? But uh, that does make it so inexplicable that it is kind of funny. Uh, Millie pushes off the recruitment of her and the alliance on Priya because... She's more of a people person, which is probably true. The sad thing is, not much more of a people person because Priya gets especially nervous. I can't imagine why you're around this character. <laughs> uh, and I can tell, like, Scary Girl never actually says this, but I'm pretty sure she's completely messing with her because she looks like Scary and on this, like, I'm gonna kill you with the spoon that I'm holding. <laughs> Again, like, I, I, I do love that kind of chaotic evil energy there. I feel like whatever Mal was trying to be in All-Stars, Scary Girls was cheating effortlessly. Like, you should have been going for this angle, personally. But I don't think she actually wants to kill Priya. Again, like, you, uh, we saw in the, in the Pirates of the Cabbagean that she was like, if Damien dies, he'll, he'd scream a lot, but then he would never scream again. You see, again, that's the chick who has her priorities in place. Not just that's good to not kill, but because... I get something out of them not dying either. Like, yeah, like more stuff like that. Uh, of course, then Z comes in to try to defuse the situation between Priya and Scary Girl. And at first it's successful, but then makes it a lot worse, which for comedy's sake, I thought was fairly funny. You could be like, that's a terrible thing Z did. He's not the, you know, brightest bulb in the bunch. So <laughs> I, I don't blame him. I know he didn't mean anything malicious. It's just his advice doesn't really help. But it feels in character that, of course, he would react this way. Uh, then we get the challenge, which is capture the flag, or rather capture the skull. Something that makes Scary Girl especially happy. I can't... Like, yeah, that makes a little too much sense so far. Uh, we get Chris continuing to be a really good host. Not just in the sense that, at the very least, he's not completely uncaring about the contestants. But in that, he's got the strong care. Like, I want to make this as weird and out there and over the top as I can. He gets a plunger gun, which takes down a tree. I want to call BS, because, no, I don't care what pressure you put on that thing. How do you take down a whole damn tree like that? But, whatever. And, of course, the challenge begins. You get Wayne and Raj, again, being very good leaders for the Frogs of Death. Of course, they're using a bunch of hockey jargon, which... I can somewhat follow, even though I don't watch sports at all, including hockey. But I at least kind of get what they're trying to say. Uh, but no one else gets it. Of course, Bowie, despite the fact he doesn't understand it, thinks it's incredibly cute. Which sounds about right. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, ferocious trout. I'm going to keep getting this right, I'm sure of it. They uh, are trying to strategize what they're going to be doing. And I love the line where we see Scary Girl Girl, I call Jackhammer. And even the team's like, wait, Jackhammer, what's that doing in this challenge? Of course, Chris then asks Chef, like, hey, did you leave that out there? And he's like, I'm sorry, that was an accident. Okay, uh, Chef made a mistake. So because of that, Jackhammer is now in play. Yes, like more stuff like that. Because I'm sorry, like you can't introduce Scary Girl with a Jackhammer and then just say, nah, forget it. No, I want to see where that goes. <laughs> and, of course, it wreaks complete havoc throughout the challenge. I'm not, it obviously isn't a helper case, but it is just so fun and menacing and scary to keep watching. <laughs> uh, uh, we see Julia hanging back on her team as defense, and all I keep asking myself is, where do you keep getting more phones? Is this the same thing with Z and the sodas? Like, 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 like where do you, like, I, I thought you were losing those. Like, how, how do you keep getting them back? Uh, I don't know. Maybe she's like a foam magnet or something. Like, magnet as in, like, not M-A-G-N-A-T-E. Uh, but, yeah. W then we get uh, Chase and uh, Priya and Millie trying to target the uh, base for the Frogs of Death. And Emma, who's trying at this point to not seem like she's even thinking about Chase, is doing a bad job of that because, obviously, she can't think about... She can't stop thinking about how much she hates him. So when she sees that she could target him with a hose that she's carrying, she's like, if I target him, it's going to send the wrong message. But if I don't target him, it'll really send the wrong message. Hmm. When I doubt, hurt Chase. I like that logic. Go for it. Because 
Yeah, I gotta be honest. I think I dislike Chase more than Ripper, and that's saying something. But I'll elaborate on that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, it's because unlike Ripper, who I think the idea is that you know you're supposed to not like him. I think with Chase, they're somewhat building up. He's gonna keep pining over Emma, and I don't want to see that. Okay, I, I I can clearly tell y'all are bad for each other. Don't get back together. But uh. Yeah, we then get uh, Scary Go continue to wreak havoc against the Frogs of Death. And even then on her own team, when she sees Damien, she starts targeting him too. Which is obviously a stupid idea and would be a good reason to target her for elimination. But uh, it dawned on me. Scary Girl would be an exquisite video game villain if you made total drama the video game. Not computer games like we've been getting like in the past online. Like, like make an actual total drama video game and have Scary Girl be... An enemy at one point, just because. Like, you don't have to give an actual reason, just have it be her. She freaking work so beautifully. I love it. Uh, of course, MK, upon seeing Scary Girl's antics, is like, do they even scream people on this show? No. I've watched this show. No, they, they don't. Which, even then, is kind of a loaded question for MK to be asking, because you're a pickpocket. Isn't that a little hypocritical of you to be asking, hey, like, these people are kind of mad, you shouldn't let them off. You're committing crimes, too, since when is pickpocketing legal? <laughs> I don't know, but, uh, we, uh, as Scarra goes in the confessional herself, somehow the cameras begin the glitch, which adds to the creepy factor for her. Who knows about the technical glitch if she can somehow do that herself, but I love it. More of that, please. Uh... Almost, you could almost call these Halloween-based videos just because Scary Girl is all throughout this stuff and she is perfect for the great, evil Halloween energy you get. I'm not saying Halloween's evil, but it is fun when it is evil. Uh, we see MK find the hut that controls the entire obstacle course, which... Really? No security around that place a at all. Because, I'm sorry, in Survivor they had this thing where, like, certain places are off-limits to the contestants... You can't go there, like, to, like, production. You can't, like, hit. no, you can just flat go there. Um, it, it makes things more entertaining, but shouldn't that be somehow against the rules? <laughs> the, okay, so maybe my rules or God folder can be kept around for this, because, I, again, like, just, that doesn't, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. But not in the way that I'm like, oh, I hate this. No, it's just in, in, in a way of, sorry, I mean, there was something on the roof there. Uh, but just in the sense of, Someone should have been keeping tabs on that little shack there. Uh, uh, during the challenge, we see uh, Wayne get hit by a large boulder, and then we see Raj almost get hit by a large boulder, but then Bowie saves him, and they have a tender moment where, like, Bowie's right on top of him, like, on the, on the ground, just, like, staring at each other, and I'm like... That is so damn precious. Yeah. Again, please, more stuff like that. And here's the thing. Well, I said in the last uh, vlog about how, like, I don't want, like, that tedious drama. Honestly, if you want the tedious drama, I understand because that's just kind of how this show goes with that sort of stuff. But at the very least, give them the proper chemistry and the proper buildup. Because I'm sorry, I still never quite got that from Gwen and Trent. I should be over that. But I keep re-looking at it and I'm like, I should be filming something for those two. And I'm just not. I, why? You, you'd think it'd be a decent match, but... I just don't see any kind of like spark between y'all. With Bowie and Raj, I see an, I see so much electricity that I think a Spider-Man villain could harness it for himself. So, uh, so yeah, I'm cool with that. Also, we see that Wayne is uh, has picked up the, the clues that Raj might be gay and is completely supportive of it. Good. Yes, please. Because, okay, granted, I don't think they could at all work homophobia in a plot like this and get away with it. Uh, but, yeah, but, but, yeah, I feel as though it is technically risky to acknowledge that other people know this kind of thing, too. And actually have it be a, a genuine coming out kind of story because it doesn't seem like Raj is out. So, again, I approve 100% of where they're going with this. I'm happy that Wayne is such strong friends with Raj that he's just like, you're gay? Awesome. Please, go for the guy you want. Like, I'm, I'm just here to support you. Because like, that's how friends should act. Just please be there for the people that mean a lot to you in life. Uh, let me think what happens next. Uh, we got 
Ripper, who I've mentioned is still pretty tough to work with, but I'll give him credit. He's trying to hold down the four for his team. So I was thinking at that moment, hey, you know what? He might be kind of the MVP for this challenge. At least that's what I thought at first, because uh, after we see some of the other ferocious trout get attached from the other side, including Chase getting hit in the face with a plunger, right after he says, I have a plan, it's... Again, that's funny. If you do more stuff like that, that's fine. But I think they're still going with the Emma subplot for him, so that doesn't work. Uh, but no, then Ripper comes to try to get the uh, enemy team's flag, or enemy team's skull. And he uses Priya as a human shield. Oh, I don't know if I can give a middle finger uh, in the middle of these VLIs. Like, whenever I try doing that in my... In my uh, Toll Drama reviews, I always have, like, some sort of, like, sensor sign, usually Mushu. If I'm cursing, you'll see that big block under me that has all the uh, dubbed over dialogue during Lindsay's rant about uh, Heather in That's Off the Chain. But, yeah, I so want to a middle finger of that because, dang it, Ripper, I thought for a second you might be kind of cool. But, nope, that is a dick, dick, dick move on your part, even for you. Uh... I'll give him credit, it's successful, but uh, only for a moment as he loses the, she the uh, skull after MK messes with the, ch the uh, challenge more and it flings over to Scary Girl, who has to just run it to crit, except no, she's gotta give it a makeover, which, correct me if I'm wrong, since when are skulls decorate? Okay, I know there's probably like some holidays when that, might, when that might happen, but like, what is a regular tool, like the skull I have in my head, is that decorated? No, not that I'm aware of, so, like, why would that be what you have to do? But I guess that's their way of saying, like, no, we need to make sure Scary Girl goes home. Even though I'd argue you could do that just from the fact she was wasting time the entire challenge just terrorizing people with a jackhammer and not doing anything else, which was great. Like, I don't think you needed this, but whatever. Uh, Emma, however, gets the skull and gets back to her team. MK gets no recognition, which makes sense to me because she's barely even seen throughout most of the challenge at least on the battlefield she's doing stuff behind the scenes and if she reveals that of course she'll be in trouble even though there's cameras watch i'm sorry like th again that doesn't really make a lot of sense like why is that going on there of course everyone me uh, of course that means that the frogs of death win immunity and first trout have to vote somebody off and initially they're all like well scary girl lost it for us so we gotta get her out but then priya when the plunger that she was hitting the face with gets pulled off, and we get probably the most disturbing little bit of animation I've seen so far, because, oh my god, why did you make her head look like that? You, if you want to put her in pain, I get that, but you did not have to make the audience want to lose their lunch by seeing her giant head, like, shaped like a watermelon. It's... I didn't like that, but her intense ferocity and anger towards Ripper, I do at least get that, so... I'll give him points for that part. Uh, of course, Damien has to be voted out as well, even though there's, like, no reason you should vote him out. Ironically, even at the marshmallow ceremony, they, you know, have Chef give a reason, like, you wouldn't help your team at all. You were running around screaming away from Scary Girl. Which he rightfully says, why do you say it like I have a choice? He doesn't. Although, should you be, should you be complaining, Damien? He's giving you a reason why you should go home, and you want to go home. Just run with it. Like, are you gonna, I'm not saying it's not hypocritical. I'm just saying, who cares if it's hypocritical? If you want to go home, it's a reason. Just, like, say, yeah, vote me out for that reason. <laughs> I like Damien, by the way. I'm not saying I want him to go home. I'm just saying, if that's his goal, that is obviously the direction you should go with for this. Uh, but, yeah, every, but, yeah, uh, Ripper does not seem to think that any of his antics were that bad at all uh, in the challenge, which, <sighs> that. Uh, but naturally, Scary Girl goes home anyways, even though she sides with Priya to get out Ripper, because she's like, you didn't deserve that. Which, think about that for a second. Scary Girl understands that Ripper went too far. Scary Girl. Again, <laughs> like that all throughout the challenge. And even she's like, okay, Ripper, douche. Just complete douche move right there. So, that shows you, like, how bad Ripper was. But Scary Girl goes home in a vote of, it appears, 4-2-1. to two to one. Otherwise, the math wouldn't work out. But, hey, at least for once, if we if that is the actual vote count, it makes perfect sense. Because there's so many times in Total Drama where we get a vote count that I am not following at all. Like, 
I'm sorry, how does Jeff go home in the tri-armed triathlon? Uh, how does, uh, how exactly does Lindsay go home? Uh, again, like ignoring how she votes herself uh, back in Told Drama Action. How does she go home then? Stuff like that. I'm just thinking, oh, the math just doesn't add up there. Uh, at least here it does kind of add up. Although, and Priya instantly notices, wait a minute. I know I voted for him. I know I voted for Ripper. I know Scarecrow voted for, for Ripper. We know Damien voted for himself because they acknowledged that and everybody's it's not even a secret. So then how's their four votes? Millie tries brushing it off because she very obviously voted for, uh, voted out Scary Girl 2, uh, which would be a betrayal to Priya if she finds out. But I do at least understand, like, yeah, maybe it's probably not the best thing to, to mention that. I'm sure that's going to come back into play later on, though. Of course, Scary Girl knows who these people are and, like, their addresses and... The thing is, if this was another character, I would say, okay, that's not the right move to where I should have gone, but I think she would have, I think that's how Scare Girl would have acted, even if she won the season, so who cares? So, yeah, she leaves. She doesn't even really try evading the drone of death that takes all the other contestants. In fact, she gets, like, a giant umbrella out and holds it up like a demented Mary Poppins. Love that. I'm going to be using that joke, by the way, when I do the total drama review of this, the, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 joke, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! <laughs> uh, and she gets sent home. She took the skull that she did a makeover for, and the episode ends. Uh, again, another episode I had a lot of fun watching. Uh, I guess if you wanted me to put it in order again, I might put it right above the last episode, Drown Town Abbey. Because, again, the Ripper stuff does take it down a lot, and I'm starting to get a little annoyed by Chase even more than before. But again... Like, there's a... It's hard for me to say these episodes are bad. Because so far, I'm not really hating any of them yet. Like, they all, in general, I'm just like, this is the great spirit of total drama that we all started out with way back in the mid-2000s. Mid to late 2000s, I should say. Uh, and they have... They keep that spirit, but they've updated a little bit with new characters and sharper comedy. They've fixed a lot of mistakes I've seen in the past. They're not perfect. They still have a couple mistakes in there. Again, you could maybe retool Ripper and Chase a little. But in general, I'm still loving how they've been going about with this season. And I can't wait to do more of these vlogs and go over the next few episodes. So I will see you all in the next vlog. Take care.